concerned on your children's book, I'm going to call it Monk in a Thunk. It's about time. Right. Yeah, what's up? So what's happening with the head? This one? Yeah. Got lots going on. <laughs> it's getting a lot of mileage, isn't it? You got like 96 likes in like an hour. I haven't got that in a year. I'm going at 103. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> no, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't expect that. I deactivated my Facebook for three months. That was one of my first posts. <laughs> just nice because I was going through a really rough time, and I felt. I honestly, I think it was just some karmatic thing because I felt so sad about my head, and I felt so insecure with what was going on with Nigel. I can see the shadows in my hand on the wall. Um, and then that happened. I think that's the most amount of likes I've gotten on Facebook in like three or four years as well. Oh, I think it was just the universe being like, hey. Well, it's a major, it's a major move. At your, the look that you had was, you know, it's it was styling. It was, uh, it was, could have been a clown poster. Could have been a new direction. Could be, you could be the face of Fairy Creek. I shaved my head for Fairy Creek. Maybe you should have done something like that. Nah, I shaved my head for me. Only me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just now just kind of change it, you know? Just edit, you know? Hey, I shaved my head a week later. I shaved my head for Fairy Creek. Yeah. Donate your hair to the blockade. <laughs> so my viral campaign isn't going that well. Out of 50 people, one person made a video. For Fairy Creek? Yeah. My campaign isn't going very well either. I was supposed to go up there today and I slept in. <laughs> I thought you were going to make me a two minute video at some point last summer or something. I mean, probably. I probably agree to it. I just never did it. Can we uh, revisit that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> You know, I should never, I should stop fucking eating honey Dijon chips. I just, I eat the whole bag. I get, I get, every time I'm upset, I get the family size bag. And I sit on my ass by myself in the dark until the whole bag is gone. And then after, I just feel like crap for two days. And I, I don't know why. I mean, I, at least it's a healthy self destruction. But, and then I'm so cranky and I'm so tired. And the next day, I just feel like crap. And like, I cry at myself to sleep the night after. And like, I just, they just make me so sad. So are the chips making you sad or, or the situation with knives will make me sad? Well, I only eat the chips when I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the other situations make me sad and then I just amplify it with the chips. I, I had a rough week too. Whew. What happened? Well, you know, I'm in that Luciel training program, right? Yeah, it's in the second week and we've spent six months designing it and they're unrolling it and it's happening. So 144 people on 12 teams are getting a training like every day you get a little video or something to do. And then on another day, you talk with your full team of 11 other people. So there's one weekly call and then there's like three assignments during the week. And this week I was all three assignments. I was like I was the guy. And so the trust map, the convo killers assessment and the five communication spaces map, we're all done. And then no one, uh, there was a woman who sent me a message last night or yesterday sometime, but basically got no feedback. It was just all videos of me that somebody was watching and, and doing. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're on a platform where you can send messages. And I thought maybe I got something like everyone did three exercises. And so I was just in this kind of, you know, there's so many things I've done where I, I do something and nothing happens, or I say something and nothing happens, or I send out a video and nothing, nothing happens, like over and over and over again to the point where it's a little bit embarrassing. It's a little bit humiliating. It's also a little bit kind of dull, you know, like. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we, we had the call this morning with the 12, with people on my team, or the people that are the designers or implementers of, of the, program and the, and we did the trust map and it went it went great like everyone spoke in a very 
you know, authentic, transparent way about trust, what kills it, what builds it. <laughs> when people make funny faces while I'm talking and I don't know why that lowers the trust. <laughs> I, I made a really, really strong yerba mate ah. and I dipped some of my chocolate in it. And it was just so strong, so potent. Oh, I put too much in there. That that was my face. Okay. Uh, like, oh, that's engine. You never know. Yeah. You never know. So we had a nice chat. We uh, heard from everybody. The, the map went over well. It was the first time, I think I made the map 15 years ago. Mm. Like when you were five. <laughs> and oh, no, when I was six, because I'm old now. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're one years old. Sorry about that. Anyway, so first time a group of people have sat around and used the trust map. And I always thought it was a really important map. And, and it's, it's, it's like fucking amazing. Like it was amazing. Like I'm in shock of just, oh my God, they're using it and other people are using it. Mm. Like it's the first time. Anyway. Amazing. So, so I, I couldn't even watch my own videos. I was just, you know, I, it's it's just it's funny to watch your own sense of learned helplessness or mine or my own sense of pattern or my own sense of uh, you might have something good but if you don't put it in the right place and you're not confident you don't kind of support it it can go nowhere and that's you know in my own world i've done a whole bunch of things with my work that like who brings up a bunch of tables to a forest blockade and then doesn't talk to anybody and then does one <laughs> just to do it but you know that, that that's not normal like it's not and i think that was a pretty good conversation we had mm -hmm. so do you feel like your boards are finally getting recognized and people are actually using them for what they're no. made for no but i think the maps like in time like everything's in time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the synergizer sitting at, I only have one synergizer table and it's sitting at the collective. Um, I did these ladies came over to dance and there was like seven of them. And then they stayed and uh, we did a, a synergizer with them here. Mm -hmm. That went really well. Like every time I do it, it goes well. It's just, you know, fuck. It's, it takes a lot of effort to bring one prototype into the market. Yeah. And yeah, nevertheless, like 10 variants of it. Yeah. A dead odd lie, a dead this, a that, and holy shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, on the online version, we're still waiting for to the remedy to save as a PNG or to, like there's some memory problem because it's got the three cards and a background mm -hmm. for some reason. There's not enough. It's too big for his memory capacity on his server for some reason. So it can't save. Weird. So until that's fixed, I mean, it can save it as a smaller version, but then you can't even read the little the definitions. Mm. But, the, but the background art looks wonderful. There's a, an artist called Hay, Hayes. I think she changed her name, but she's a brilliant artist. And so we've got 10 of her back, her pieces of work in the background and I was thinking you know, at some point you choose an artist and then you choose one of their pictures to put behind your remedy spell so you can really yeah. make it look pretty right and then yeah. our artists get their work put out into the world because I would think at some point a lot of people are going to use it so um, if you know any artists mm -hmm. uh, who want to bring their work into the world uh, maybe send them my way yeah maybe, totally maybe every month I'll change them or something like that Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll lost ground. I'll look into it. You know, a lot of really amazing artists. Actually, my friend Marcella is in Victoria right now, and she just made some T-shirts with her art and a bunch of stuff. And her art is amazing. She she did one of my tattoos. Okay. I'll send her a message. Have you been using it at all lately? Uh, I used it a lot at the beginning, um, but I haven't been using it a lot lately. Kind of forgot about it. I I used it probably the most before I went to Cortez the first time and then on the way back from Cortez um and then in the last couple of weeks I haven't really been using it but there's just been a lot going on 
which is more of a reason to use it. I just been putting anything that takes me inward on the back burner. Finally, today I was I I decided I was going to do a pros and cons list and sit down with myself. I sat down with myself and made plans with five people, and then I <laughs> walked around the block, got groceries, came home, had a call with a friend, like you know, did, just did anything I could instead of sitting down with myself. Yeah. Well, I've been through a lot, a lot of emotional processing. <clears throat> you seem to dive in deep for long periods of time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all night. It's it's been it's been funny with Niger. <laughs> Called him yesterday, and he said that he spent all day looking at how to kill himself because he's so sad that I'm not coming to Cortez anymore, and then kind of begged me to come to Cortez. So that's what my pros and cons list has to be about. Oh. oh. And then I had I had a, a cute guy sleepover. <laughs> A couple of nights ago, I'm gonna go see him. He invited me to a sound, sound singing bowl, sound bath tonight, but I'm not gonna go. He's so cool. He's a yoga teacher. He's around. He's a couple of years older than me, but that's probably the most person in my age range that I've ever been intimate with, and I think that's actually really awesome. And I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna, see, I'm gonna see him this weekend too. It's funny. I met him at the collective. <laughs> really? Yeah, he's, he's one of Tree's best friends. I'm just saying something, but <laughs> go for it. Well, I'm sure he's an interesting man. I think so. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. He kind of he stayed up really late and gave me a back massage for an hour, and then before I was going to bed, he checked in to make sure I was okay. And then the morning I gave him coffee and I, and I looked him in the eyes and asked him to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I like you, but you have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Too much stuff on my plate, thanks. <laughs> it's like someone coming in from nowhere and you're in the middle of this banquet with a hundred people around you and you're actually the main cook. <laughs> and, and then all of a sudden this person jumps in your life for a millisecond and they have no idea of your contacts but they like the they like to cook <laughs> food's great <laughs> they like what they see they want to eat some more but there's no room left <laughs> funny he's like uh, one of my he told me that one of his ex-partners shaved their head when they were together but he didn't freak up with her for it <laughs> i thought that was cute <laughs> Yeah. So are you every every week you're working with the Lysio Foundation now? Yeah, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, there each day there's a, there's a video and an assignment. And this is for like a year. Wow. So this is like like what just happened. Like it's actually you know, to dive into trust at the beginning. Like why do groups break up? Why, you know, why isn't Fairy Creek really organized? Mm -hmm. They might be, but I doubt it, you know. I doubt it. Um, but these guys, everyone coming in here wants to sort of change the world and wants to create something that is going to bring a solution into the world. Everyone there from the get-go. Plus they've been vetted, right? Like they got their own divination system of who's ready and who's not. Mm -hmm. So, so this is a, a select crew of people and the five people who came together to, 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 as sort of like outside contractors, Luciel has a really beautiful, loving team that's been together and like, imagine going around the world and finding 12 spiritual elders. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's, I don't know about you, but to me that, that would be like a, a an event adventure of a lifetime but you know a very high thing to do with with uh with purpose totally and to me like from a spiritual point of view they're following guidance you know they're, they're loving people they want to build a new community they're doing it themselves they put in the time they tried something and now they're adapting it they're changing it because it wasn't working and that's 
that's you know you got to see that in groups like they can actually see what's going on change direction and come up with something new mm -hmm. and that's what you know i came out of nowhere a guy from hong kong sixth generation phd uh teacher who i met in a synergy group online suggested me and uh, another person there darmendra to go talk to these guys back when they were looking for people and so wow. so it was quite extraordinary the the way we met and then they were the only people in the last year i i, I said okay i'll focus on these guys and nobody else uh -huh. and just participate and it's it's really good right now like good. It's, uh, to go from that state of I'm getting no feedback. My work, my work's just gone into the world. Is this, did it, did it die? <laughs> and then to get the feedback of, no, it's working. I, I participate with other people that it worked and it's based on theory, you know, it's just based upon conceptual imaginings and then using those as reference points to, to gauge your experience and to see something, how things connect together. Mm. Anyway, am I boring you? No, no, it's cool to see how people, I guess, process it and go through it without any context before. I guess not anyone that's like known you through your past or anyone knows you in real life. They know you for your work as a teacher. And that must be really interesting and really powerful to just be just clean. Everything is a clean slate. They've never seen anything like your work before. They've never, you know, seen anything like the synergizers. They've never seen anything like that. And then you're going, "Hey, I'm here," and they're all eager to go through the modules and go through it and just show up for those classes and have the discussions about it. And that must be really, really wonderful. Well, yeah. I mean, it's essentially I've been working on a team building system, so a team has to use it, but the team has to learn it first. And this is a team but it's integrated with other people's work. So it's not just me by myself trying to do it, which I was failing at all the time. I mean, failing at a point of sort of what it's supposed to do, because it's supposed to work with a team and it's supposed to work with many teams and it's supposed to work with a community and it's supposed to work with many communities. But it starts as a conceptual map in someone's mind that we agree upon to reimagine the future together. And so, you know, it's, you know, the other people involved are, are like very um, impressive in terms of what they're capable of and how they're communicating and, and how everyone is showing up, right? Everyone's showing up. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> bar. I'm just, if I'm, that's my signal for it. Kate, you're talking too much. <laughs> no, that was my signal for, they probably wonder what I'm doing with my head down here. <laughs> I'm actually eating chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's, some, it's hard to gauge someone's attention span, right? It's, and I find when I really get into what I want to talk about, then I can really kind of go on a bit long. And that's, no, one, me too. that's one of the, Convo killers, right? Blah, blah, blah. And so it's in one on one, it's way easier to gauge. In a group, it's you got to be a lot more careful. Totally. But you're in a different. I like world. what you're saying. Huh? I, I just said you're in I a. Like what you're <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Maybe we're not synergizing. Well, you go first. I'm in a different world, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your age group, right? I mean, at that age, I mean, to me, it's way more fun, way more times with groups and less business and more just doing things, right? And having fun as friends. And that's, that to me is way different from doing business together or trying to change the world together or trying to, um, you know, protect Ferry Creek or to run a business, run a school, create, you know, bring technology into the world. It's like, I've been spending so much time kind of the only outside community space time was like activists <laughs> and activists by their nature aren't really organized their independence coming together yeah i don't know i mean i was reflecting on that today too i don't i don't know though i don't really 
I don't really feel like I allowed ever allowed myself time to just well actually I devoted my whole life to my marketing that like, to play in groups and have that fun but I mean I feel like ever since I went through puberty it was just like what's the vision what's the business I'm starting like what's my purpose like I started I was like 16 it was like an event at the Power River Veggie Fest I had my own company called the Sprout and the Bean I was like trying to sell organic cacao chocolates and I'm just like trying like yeah just come, like I'm I don't know in like like certified real job and youth teacher when I was like 17. I don't know I never really allowed myself time to just be young and not and I was always surrounding myself with people that are were a lot older than me and expecting myself to you know be on that level and then getting mad at myself that it wasn't there hmm. yeah. that's a drag well you got a lot of time in front of you I, I think to me it's best when you can combine it like mm-hmm. like that whole idea of planetary guardians was you'd hang out with your friends you'd make media but you defend something you do something you actually have a cause that you're wanting to that that drove your main actions and i think that's what's missing from the youth today is like there's whether it's cub scouts but now it's kind of like cub scouts has to turn into sort of festival forest fairy folk that you know come together to have a really fun time but to do it in the name of something and to do it to protect the forest yeah, I was thinking about that today, actually. I was like, they about stomach ache, and I was in the toilet. And I was like, why don't any activist group actually end up working? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, it's never been a worse, a better time to try to save the planet, but it's also the worst time possible to try to do it. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Fucking COVID shit. Yeah, I mean, to save the planet, you need community, you need events, you need to be able to broadcast to different people that you wouldn't normally that are in your world. You need to be out there with the public to change the public and to change the world. Mm -hmm. But hey, I mean, no revolution started at, well. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta start somewhere. Right, It's, it's the best time to change the world when the world sucks. Because that's when it really needs a big change. <laughs> it's true. The timing, the timing could be better to rouse a nation. What the fuck else are they doing? They're just sitting at home. Yeah. You know, everybody's sitting at home. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's got a lot of time. Everyone's got a laptop. And we're not using it together. Like, there should be hundreds of thousands of people every day fucking just pounding globe and mail or pounding the government or just like everyone just fucking pounding whoever's against trying to get these old growth forests logged like just fucking erase them man like that's fun that's like magic in real life you throw down a card and it's like fucking you know you bring your team in and you just organized a hundred people to to write five messages in the globe and mail on one thing and it went and filmed it and then send the video out and it got a million hits, you know, something like that. Like where, like there should be battles to see who the best planetary guardian team is. Like what, it, what media are you creating right now? That's your output. That's what you're seeing. You're showing the world. And right now, Fairy Creek is it. Is it? It I'm is. So, I'm so out of the loop. It's hilarious. <laughs> you don't even know. The injunction means that they've got two weeks and then if they do the injunction card, which they always do, then all those guys are going to get arrested. And boom, clear cut. And unless you have enough people there to back you up, which to me right now is doubtful. I don't know. I feel like if they all got arrested, then I, but I, like they would have probably like 20 people come the next day. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. That'd be so silly if everyone there got arrested and they went to jail. It's fun. I was, no I, I was arrested twice and I, I was like always arrested in a fucking lawn chair. They always got me easy. I could have been running through the forest <laughs> like a freaking elf. And they just, Elijah, come with us. <laughs> so, so brutal. 
And, you know, if you don't so sign their form, they keep you in there. If you sign their form, you're, you're out that day. So I didn't sign the form and everybody else got left out, let, let out in a day. And I, I lasted four days. <laughs> Did you ever sign the form? I caved, man. I don't want to stay in there anymore. This is fucking boring. <laughs> That's how I feel about traveling. I was like, I'll just go and I'll learn the law. And they can't do anything with me because of the Canadian law. And I won't have to get a COVID test. I won't have to wear a mask. If I'm, if I'm really, really educated with the law, I won't have to do anything. I won't have to get the vaccine. I won't have to do anything. And then I, I you know, I, I think of myself like <laughs> it's four days in jail and I'm finally like put it up my nose. I just want to get Thai food. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think my question is, you were saying, why do all these communities fail? And that, that's also my question. I met this girl in Cortez and she's trying to create like a campground, tiny home, sustainable community for anyone to come through in the community with like aquaponics and permaculture gardens and to the moon and back, every single project going on that people want to show up and do. And she was like, but I don't want it to be like one of those communities where it's really good and then it goes really bad. Like, why do all these communities fail? Why do you think they all fail? Uh, because they're unprocessed shadow work and no healing system, not enough awareness around why people fight, no conflict resolution system, no desire to really get to the, the heart of the matter and uh, basic lack of organization at every level. That would be the beginning of my assessment. <laughs> Do you think if more like conscious communities talked about people's shadow and called them up on things? Like I noticed with my relationship with Nigel, he's one of the first people that ever called me out on my negative habits and that was really hard. But if you're like in a community, and that was super hard, and I was in a community setting to be bad, and it's almost embarrassing when you're with other people. Do you think if we're all able to hold ourselves accountable? Whoa, it's my shadow. <laughs> Whoa, I'm talking about shadow work. No fucking way. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. These communities would actually work out. Well, I think shadow work happens whether we like it or not. I guess it's just how much coaching is there or how much people are aware. Um, again, sort of planetary guardians to me is like I'm like a training coach. I'm I'm supposed to help you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that that may, may, that may or may not be occurring to any degree but uh <laughs> we chat what about once a week yeah how do you like it it's good it's helpful in what way um i feel like it makes me a better person and it also inspires me in a lot of ways. And I feel like you have good feedback. And I I value what you have to say about things. Um, I don't know. It's also nice to have a simple space to just listen and allow you to vent when you need it. And it makes me feel really supported and taken care of. Cool. Yeah. Also, I really appreciate the way that you look at things. A lot of people are like, oh, no. like this side or it's this way and like it's always kind of from a half perspective and I feel like a lot of times you look at all the types of perspectives about it and are just not leaning on you know this this idea you're waiting on you know that was fucked but like that's okay and you know maybe maybe this but also maybe that and that can that can work with all this if, if you want to do the geometry of it yeah helpful for you well that feedback's helpful i mean i'm i'm kind of winging it right so i mean i'm there's a lot of things i'm playing with right now and so there's a and there's more conscious intention with each kind of connection and relationship because yeah. things things are like getting okay there's enough structure that now i can sort of stabilize and kind of understand people better and understand my relationship to them better as the tools get closer to coming to market where I have to 
step into the role of teaching. I have to teach it. And so to teach it, I got to be it. And to be it, I got to, you know, do it. And this is part of it. Like each piece is part of it. And our relationship is part of it. And my relationship with each person that I, like you, you are in an active status with me. So, you know, to me, there's only a few people that I'm actively in communication with. And so each one of those to me is very important. You know, and I see you're the youngest person I'm in contact with. Um, you're also the only person who's actually been on a couple of potential planetary guardian endeavors. So it's kind of like that's our context, right? And each time I've seen you as a facilitator, I see you as someone who's there, who's part of the team to make whatever it is happen. Yeah. And that's, we haven't reached that stage yet of actively being people who gather, organize, train, and give people experiences. Like deep down, it's like, give them the experience and you can bring in some teachings along the way, but it's, it's an art, right? It's a real art, I think, to, to empower youth and to, that's how I see that main category that to me you're holding the space for is youth empowerment. And, it's, and one day in some manner, at least that's how I'm seeing you. And so it's like, okay, well, how do I empower facilitators? How do I teach facilitators? Like teaching how to use a synergizer is one way of facilitating, but it's, it's kind of like very structured, very dull, very, it, that's very different from being live with people in the forest <clears throat> attempting to get 10 people to actually do something together. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, with Kyle, if he's around and whoever, like there's, there's a team there, people, but you and Kyle have been the ones that I've been working with to some degree. Right. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been in a situation where we were actually, okay, we're planetary guardians. This is it. People paid us or somehow the costs were made and that we actually implemented a media program, <laughs> maybe coming up at Ferry Creek, you know? No. So to me, the higher goal is, is, having success in terms of one, seeing the need of the moment and then acting, getting better as a team to meet it and sort of have that balance itself with the rest of our lives. But maybe sometimes we're full in. Sometimes, you know, there's nothing else going on. It's full in, right? And that's, that's when shit gets done. Yeah. You know? And that's like when you have workshops or when you give workshops, it's like that's that's a whole weekend of, you're on it and you got to be on it and it's fun it's and it's challenging and it's something which you know i think we can do as a team and i've done it in different ways but i just have this vision i have an idea of something that just needs you know you've tasted it <laughs> not working <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you can, yeah. <laughs> many a time so I've never felt like more of an outcast than how I feel when I do play to take <laughs> <laughs> And it's great because I'm like, hey guys, um, this is actually who I am. And then everyone like <laughs> but it's nice, I feel the most myself. But I'm also the most <laughs> it's also the most conflict with other people. <laughs> <laughs> So it kind of makes sense that you go to the place where there's roadblocks, right? Because there's conflict. And if you're, if by your very nature, you attract or you create conflict, sometimes it's good to go there. And I think what our art will be is conflict resolution at some point. Yeah. Yeah, let's just let's do all the conflicts first. Yeah. Okay. So good at conflict resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That advice you gave me last week when things were really rough with Nigel was probably the most helpful advice that I I had got in that whole month. And then after I talked with you, like I cleaned my room, like I took care of myself, I did my laundry, like I made a better space for myself, for like mind, and body, and better environment, and so connecting, reaching out with people more, to people more. 
and just started taking care of myself more because I was in a very deep, like, poor me, self-pity. And you're like, yeah, you fucked up. Stop being a cunt. And I was like, okay. <laughs> That's all I needed to hear. It's, it's, it sat me out of it entirely. Mm. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's good to feel useful, right? It's good to good to jump in and... Um, <laughs> I mean, if that's what community is, you know, everyone's, uh, I can sure listen to people and give feedback. That's definitely one thing I can do. Mm. Whether they like the feedback. <laughs> do you find like you're having, does it feel good teaching with Lucio? Well, I mean, imagine making three videos, but like, with the two, with two the hosts of Alicia, Olivier, and Sophie, these beautiful people, like they're really, really, really nice, and they make you feel very appreciated. They love you, like they're they're just oozing with kind of love and light, just in their nature, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so speaking into that is very different from talking into empty space or talking into people who aren't that interested, or talking into people that don't understand, or talking to people that kind of like close you out most people just close you out right i mean if, if you're not vibing with how they want to live their life and for me i get closed out a lot and especially if i really want to express myself express you know if, if i'm <laughs> so for me to speak into a, a willing audience and one that is actually going to use it to teach you know a different me comes out all of a sudden i'm i'm not hesitating or or worried or any kind of negative state. It's just a pure flow of expression. That's at the end of it. It's like, wow, you know, it's just, it, it, it worked. And then to just do that easily, like one take five minutes and no, no retakes, no scripts, just, this is what we're going to do. Roll, boom, cut, done, load. And 144 people watched it three times. And they actually did it right without me having to do anything <laughs> after that. So that to me is a miracle because mm. now, you know, that can just be done over and over again. And that was a high value moment, a high value capture. And that's what video can do. You can do high value captures that then if it's used over and over again, all of a sudden it takes normal time and creates, you know, boy, I just created something other people can use. And so for me, you know, I just notice I have such a different, depending on my emotional state, depending upon how I feel received, there's a huge difference in how I'm going to express myself. Yeah, so it's going to, it's increasing my confidence to sort of continue and to sort of like, I mean, look at this. I got, I got a, oh, cool. got a 3D thing. And then, uh, that's so fun. and then I got a bigger, like good. So I got a two foot, I got a one foot 3D. I got this thing. And so you can put the planets on it and you can gauge where the planets are all the time, right? Like active astrology. You know, like you get a little, you get a little planet and you put it on there. I don't know if you can see that. But anyway. <laughs> you, you you get the balls you put them on the round thing and you see jupiter's here saturn's here and you know and so and you can track that cycle and then there's a whole bunch of other ways right that you can use this is the beginning of the the learning system so so as uh, in the background i'm making um <coughs> i'm upgrading the tools and stuff but there always seems to be like some balance with emotional hell that kind of is in the background coming in and out you know this insanity that that uh hits me once in a while or all the time yeah. <coughs> yeah it's 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 funny to watch you know the the jumps between thinking that that everything's fine and don't worry about it and in the flow and beautiful work versus this, ah, I'm not doing enough or, ah, I don't have the resources or, ah, you know, and this, I don't know, like this 
like I'm judging the stupidity stronger and stronger. Like it's, it's bugging me more. Like it's, there's something that's bugging me more and more as they get stupider and stupider. I get more and more sort of irritated. Is that with the public or with everyone? Yeah, that's with that. Yeah. With the, I guess, you know, it's, you can get irritated at a large body, but individuals, that's just life. Right. I mean, it's, everyone's going to do their own thing, but I, I just can't like when I, I scan Facebook constantly. I'm reading con comments constantly. I'm, I'm trying to gauge where people are thinking or how they think or what they're saying. And I've got this massive amount of informational input, but it's, 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 uh, there's hardly any conversation I'm seeing that are building towards creation together. Like it's, it's an analysis of something kind of limited by whatever's being put forward, but there is, there's nothing like at least what's coming through me. And then whenever I put anything up, it just like goes nowhere. It just, just, I put up this thing that has the spiritual masters, mind control zombies, uh, asleep, awakening, awakened and spiritual masters. And I put it to 10 different Facebook groups yesterday, over 200,000, 300,000 people total, not like just two likes, not even a, and these are all in spiritually oriented groups or groups where there's people who are sort of supposedly high minded. Mm. Nothing. I don't know. I mean, my view is that the people that are, are highly spiritual, let's see, a spiritual hierarchy, <laughs> one is better than the other. Um, but they're not going to be on fucking Facebook. Anyone that's community minded, they're probably in a community that doesn't have Facebook. <laughs> Facebook oh, is eating a separation of I am this, I am living through my ego, this is what I do, and this is my great life. Facebook isn't we are a community and we're here together, like let's co-create, let's work as a team, let's change the world. Yeah. What, is, what are people doing for me and what am I doing in my life? Facebook is narcissistic. Facebook is like I want to look good in this picture so people like it so I can feel better about myself. Not I want to go and save a million puppies. And if someone's saving a million puppies, it's just so we can post it on Facebook so they can get a praise about it out there. Oh, so is that... Oh, wait a second. There's a... There's going to be seven women dancing in the space tonight. I'm so jealous. I'm going to come to Vancouver one of these days just so I can come. Really? I mean, there's contact dance on Thursdays here. And then there's, there's a silent disco also on Thursdays. And there's dances at Willow's Beach on Fridays. And then there's also a bunch of us. But I just never go to it. I feel like I'd rather just go to Vancouver. <laughs> but I wanted to know if dance is more likely than one down the street. <laughs> Well, this is easier. You don't have to move. And she does a Sunday morning, too. So you can do Friday night and Sunday morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to come down one of these days. I feel like I need to be in so many places right now. Like, I feel like I should be on Cortez, but I also feel like I should be in Victoria. But I also feel like I should be in Nymo. But I also feel like I should be in Vancouver. So I think you should go to all those places and do town hall meetings for Fairy Creek. I don't know. I think the people at Fairy Creek have been so disrespectful towards me in so many different ways unconsciously mm -hmm. that I almost feel ignorant at the fact that showing up and putting so much energy into that for people that have constantly like broke me down. I agree. And I, you know, I, I got turned off and, but, I, but right now it's about the trees. It's fucking with people. What's that? It's about the trees. It's about the fucking trees. And if they're getting in the way, fuck them. Do it without them. Fuck them. Yeah. Like everyone has the right to do something. I just feel like, I'm like, okay, I'm organizing town hall meetings for 30 feet. Everyone be like, Brooke, not that, that weird girl that came. She hasn't even been up here in like months. She even educating people on the program properly. Are those meetings even COVID safe? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So true. Boom, 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 boom. Breakdown. And then suddenly I'm not doing my meetings properly. Suddenly I'm not raising proper awareness on Fairy Creek because I've educated people wrongly because I told them only 1% of remaining old growth is left, but it's actually 1.9%. And then sudden, I don't know, I'm overthinking it. Maybe I should just do it. I should probably just do it. They probably just be grateful that I did it. <laughs> well, let's do it under the Planetary Guardian's banner. No. Anyway, it's, it, I mean, I know it's, it's like there's a group think there that just totally is a turn off that they could have millions helping them, but they probably turned away 900,000 without even knowing it. <laughs> I was like, one of my friends was just like yeah I went up there and there was this lady bashing white people and saying how hard it is for her to be indigenous to my friend who's indigenous but looks white who had a really tough upbringing with his indigenous mother and she just kept bashing white people to him and then suddenly they got in this big argument together and they never came back and then it was like oh yeah another like Kyle got kicked out my friend Garvin got kicked out Another one of my friends left because he was upset about how he was being treated and his sister was uncomfortable. Like another one of my friends left because he was being used as a mediator for a lot of group conflicts because he's trained to be a counselor and he didn't want to have to go on his couple days off to use that skills to mediate for a whole activism community. Another one of my friends, like, you know, it's, it's this list going on. I'm like, it's, yeah, I just need to let go of the past. I, I can't keep holding on to it. It's, what, it's what's important is right now. Is those trees cut down, get cut down? I'm just sitting on my ass in pajamas eating honey Dijon chips and talking smack. I'm gonna feel like a real asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta rise above this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, we need everyone right now. Where can I find information about what's going on and then junction? Because I've, I've been in I a- think, I think go to the Fairy Creek, uh, not the Fairy Creek, the Rainforest Flying Squad Facebook group. Okay. That probably has the latest stuff. Um, but make a two minute video. Like I really, I, I'm trying to get this across that make a two minute video and send it to all your friends and ask them to make a two minute video and send it to all your friends. You know, the thing is, I feel like I could do that. Like, I feel like I'm on a good flow right now. And like, I've had a lot of support. I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Like I have 72 unread text messages. Jesus. I have like, I have like a million, I have like five messages on Facebook right now that I haven't answered. Like, look at this shit. It's like, boom, 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 boom. That's just in the day. That's just in Jesus. the day. Like, I feel like I'm in a good rhythm. I feel like I, I could do it. <laughs> and I could get some responses. Yeah, I think you could get thousands going if you really put your will behind it. I don't want to do it today. I don't want to do it tomorrow because I'm in a honey John kind of yeah. mindset after I ate those fucking chips, which always is trying. <laughs> but yeah, have you you've you've obviously made your video. Yeah. So I, I think I'm going to make a goal of I'm, I'm going to, uh, because all I did was tag 45 people and, and one person made a video and I'm thinking, that's pretty slack of me, you know, send it. I think I got to talk to 20 people like this and get them on board because face to face is very different, right? You're going to say yes or no face to face, but if you're tagged, it's like people just don't pay attention anymore to that, especially to me. So got to change that. Well, yeah, I've been thinking about a lot, a lot about that too. Like even on my birthday, I didn't have a lot of people. I had, I had a little bit of people, not a lot of people. Messaged me happy birthday on my Facebook wall, but I had more people send me happy birthday on my messenger. And when I came into like, thank you, how have you been? And then it got into this conversation, this catch up. So I was actually more grateful that people were private messaging me for my birthday mm. than posting on my wall, just posting on my wall and tagging me and stuff like that. I didn't feel as as much of a connection as someone just authentically being like, how have you been? Happy birthday. I miss you. Oh, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, it's great to hear from all your friends. Mm -hmm. I think gotcha. I didn't realize how, how distant I've been from everyone in the last couple of months. And that makes me feel really, really, really. I'm like, I have all these amazing I have chocolate everywhere. <laughs> I have all these amazing, wonderful people. And then I've just been spending all my energy on my relationship. 
No. Knock in the face. Yeah. But hey, that's what you do, apparently. Well, what I did, apparently. Well, different stages in our life, different things happen. Mm -hmm. But now we need to reach the community and use your resources to get the message out. No, I feel like I was in one in one space and now I need to go into community space. Yeah. So take what I learned in one on one space. Community space. Yeah, and balance it out. Do you think all communities, like intentional communities, like do you think our eco village would work if someone was like, hey Brandy, you're like I've been I've seen your attachment style and I'm seeing that your shadow is going like this and you're treating people through a reaction from your nervous system and are you speaking to your heart? Do you think that these communities would have less of a turnover rate? Or would that person just be like, fuck off? I, I don't know. I mean, I think my, my, my guess is Brandy's done a lot of work on herself and she's willing to deal with the shadow work, but you need like a team of people who are at a sort of high enough level. I think, I think there's been so much pressure on her and I think that her and her husband have different philosophies. And I, th I think you need a light, like it's on your core team. I think you want alignment of philosophy. And if you have that, then you have the energy to, to, to attract everything else in a good way. If you don't, I think things break down a lot because there's deep down people have philosophical differences and that's the biggest thing that separates people in my mind. So you want like whatever I think is going to work is going to be, there has to be a basic philosophy that everyone has agreed to, whether it's a set of values or whether, but it's more like, this is how we're going to be. And so to me in Planetary Guardians, you make your value system. There is a larger value system. I guess I got a huh. It's got to be a bit of both. It's got to be a way to make your own philosophy. That fundamentally is what the inflow matrix is. It's like a way to organize your mind and your conceptual thinking system into really building a whole new future. Is that something that you're hoping to teach in the Lucio Foundation? Yeah. And those guys like, the, you know, they're ready, they're prepared. Like, it's perfect. I couldn't have made it more perfect. And I did nothing to make it happen. I feel like you deserve it like that. Putting so much effort into things that are, aren't are really falling into place. It's nice that the one thing that falls into place is effortless. I know. It's funny. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. Sometimes you just need to be like, you know what? I trust you guys. You got it. And just hope for the best. Instead of always having to be in control. Yeah. Well, that's definitely what happened with CL. Like they're they're just doing all these pieces and parts that, you know, it takes a full team to do it. And they're very proficient and they're they they've done a wonderful job. Like they have a very good platform. They put a lot of effort and time into the design. They're very good as hosts and they've got a really good crew of 144 people like ready to go and that's you know they they agree to to go the full year and to go through the, the tough stuff so this is week two and thanks for listening that this has helped me because i i haven't really debriefed it and i i i find that uh your i like to tell it to you and now you're getting some story and context to it, right? Like there's something building here that's pretty cool. And, you know, you want key people to understand, you know, what is happening and, and wh where it's going and, and what the possibilities are. Because, you know, there's a, like we need a new training system. We need a way to get people to think differently. And, you know, that's basically what I got. And it can be put with anything else. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be by itself, but it can be the th we have to look at how do we orient our minds? How do we think together? Mm -hmm. Because that's the big piece of the puzzle, right? Like the, the collective is confused. The collective is <laughs> fucked. Yeah, spiritual collective is so messy. It goes into like 
the spiritual hierarchy. I, oh, I'm better because I'm. I don't know. No, no, no. no I, I haven't worn a mask all year. So I think you're all sheep. And no, 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 no. And, you know, I, I ascended last week and I actually levitated. So you guys are all. I don't know what you guys are doing. Or, you know, I mean, at the times of my life where I've been feeling the most spiritual of all. I was also living the most in my ego. That was oh, I'm the most spiritual evolved. I don't know what's going on with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I literally I feel like I went down so much in my spiritual practice because I was just becoming like a my there was some some foot up my ass. And I was doing yoga three times a day and I was raw vegan. Like I I wouldn't even hang out with that me anymore. Because I was like I would positive vibes only if you were depressed, please don't talk to me. Like I need everything that's high elevation. I'll only eat if it's organic. I'll only you know like I'm malnourished, but I'll just do yoga three times a day. <laughs> I won't actually do any work on my shadow. I'll just be <laughs> after. Uh, How old were you? I was 17. Holy shit. That's focused. Yeah, I was so focused. That's good to be that way at that age. I, you know, I haven't felt like that in the last four years. And I feel like I lost a lot of my drive. And I feel like the only thing that's changed is I started seeing Nigel. I'm just kidding. Um, but that feels like a big part of it. Because every time we're not together, my drive comes back. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The times that I've been most spiritually thinking I was about, like, you know, I would meditate and, you know, I would be moving up or like I do sitting bowl meditations or doing yoga every single day and man, I mean, new juices and nah, nah, nah. sound bowl of five, like, you know, and then a static dance after and like only hang out with people that are wearing 100% bamboo organic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. It's funny. I was with I was with this guy a couple days ago, and I was giving him some of my old clothes. He was like, "What? What material is this made out of?" I was like, "I don't know." They're like, "Oh, okay." And I was like, "It has to be a certain material on your body, apparently." Yeah. When it comes to the collective, I think it's messed up because we're we're looking for some kind of praise where there's spirituality to make us feel like it's okay and it's cool and i i think that's what i was getting at when i was talking about facebook earlier is it's almost become that spirituality is some kind of trend and like you know like you go to like sephora and these big chain stores and they're selling like crystals and jade rollers and like now people are selling like witch kits with like crystals and sage and palo santos is literally going extinct because all these hippies keep burning it to like kill their bad vibes and, <laughs> and just getting to such an extent where really I don't know. There's just so much duality with it. It's like crystals. It's like you can have this giant crystal collection, but also you could be putting your money towards people that are underpaid and having to mine for crystals unethically. You know, be like, oh, look what I got. <laughs> I fucking meditated today. <laughs> There's no end to the depth of one's hypocrisy. Um, so I don't know. I think that's that's Facebook spiritual, and I feel like Facebook spiritual is. is well, there but it, if I can say something like in my day, it was never spoken about, and it wasn't real. Like just no one was interested in it. No one really talked about it, and so I guess just the fact that people are even acknowledging or putting any attention on it to me is is a good thing. Um, I think on the spiritual trip dealing with one's ego seems to be the entire battle at one point and everyone is right now helping everybody see each other reflect one another and sort of uh you know i i think deep down there is like some sort of a i would even say a spiritual transformation for our species as the ai comes together and as the you know, there's a bigger push to this global control system that if it really comes in, fuck, man, we're fucked. Or that's what the force that you have to brace against 
to sort of emerge the phoenix rising out of the ashes kind of like you know become our superman because we got to become that to deal with what's coming at us right now like these fuckers are, are fuckers they're fucker right and we're totally unorganized and basically i'm saying i've got a way to organize us all yeah and it's just going to take us to learn these maps and bring it into a media system where we're in control of our media system where you are your own media you are focusing on the story that you want to focus on and you're participating in it and to me that's so much different from just watching and commenting and just like you say in facebook like that type of platform is not going to give us victory that type of platform is is instilling more of the slave mentality yeah totally well i mean it, it, it is it is a free platform that takes your information and gives it to ai every time you're saying your work it, it's like what i said with the crystal mining every time you're saying your work you know it, it's spiritual knowledge you know it's, it's getting pumped out straight to zuckerberg put in the ai and then goes into this giant alien robot machine that's going to take over anyways so i mean <laughs> may as well just keep it to yourself and stay off grid <laughs> but easier said than done, right? I'm not. I haven't done it. I'm not doing it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think in the next, definitely in the next 20, 20 30, I think it's going to be like there's going to be some big change with the spiritual community. A lot of things are going to die off. Twenty thirty. Yeah in eight years you're saying no well, well probably the whatever i think the people who who get vaccinated at some point are going to just start dying totally <laughs> well, we're into the zombies I predicted it, and i mean a lot of other people from like then early 1900 esoteric writers predicted this it's been said in the books for a while it's even predicted in the bible there's some mass extinction happening, but I've, I've decided actually that I'd rather be ignorant. You'd I'd rather be what? Have my telegram groups anymore. I'm not going to read COVID red pills. I'm not going to like keep feeding it. Cause that, that is what the Rothschilds were saying on that thread. Like that is the youth feeding that. Like I'm not going to feed it. I'm just going to be out and be present for now and enjoy life as is. I'm pretty lucky to be on such a small island that doesn't have such strict restrictions right now and you know i'm able to do what i want to do still so i don't i don't need to put that on you my life is still pretty normal i mean there's some people that don't want to go out and i, I don't go out and see them <laughs> right but there's something big in the work for sure but i don't need to know it <laughs> well you already know it i mean how, how much worse can you get I mean, whatever stupidity they put forward, I can't imagine more. They're trying to lessen it, I think. But I'd rather uh, yeah, do yoga in the park in the sun and plant a garden than just sit on my ass at 3 a.m. Like, <laughs> girl, like I might hit COVID red pills. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's garden season. That is a, that is my big thing. Like you got you got <laughs> you got the Lysiel. I got garden season. I went and got a bunch of seeds today. I'm super excited. I'm gonna start a garden on the boat. I'm gonna start um, a garden here with the grow lights. I'm gonna start a garden in the porch. I'm gonna give some plants to my grandpa. I'm gonna give some plants to my friends. I'm gonna start a garden probably somewhere else. And I'm probably just gonna end up biking all around town, building gardens and grill gardening at people's places. So I'm super pumped about that. Hmm. Got dill? Oh no, my seeds are floated. Hey, got... Maybe you could figure out how to use this to plant seeds for a garden. Like to uh, maybe there's some way to put a planting schedule on here. Oh my gosh! Yes, the best garden that I ever, ever, ever was around was um, Bernice's garden at the Hawthorne, and she planned it on the moon cycles on different timelines based on like the weather and the planets and the moon. And she had the most beautiful garden I've ever seen in my life. Aha. Uh -huh. So 
Maybe that could be a, a task. Can you, show, can you show it to me a little bit closer? Up. So how would that work for planting your garden? Um, well, the, the blue is yearly, so each one of those is a different month. So you might, you, I guess you put the seeds per lunar cycle, and then the, the lunar cycle is the next thing in. So you cr maybe create a pattern of watering or... Oh, that would be so cool. You just each moon cycle you choose the plants that you're planting i guess you'd have to have a big moon cycle map <laughs> see that's i mean i should get one anyway i feel like that make my life easier <laughs> yeah because the idea is then we start using this as the main clock that all the planetary guardians are using as their main timepiece. So yeah, exactly. we, we switch from linear time to cyclical time are you going to teach that in the, the CO? Yeah, I think so. At some point, yeah. Well, I seem to be taking the prototypes to the next level. Like, this is the first time I've done a 3D in a long time. I mean, I should have done that a long time ago. I like the 3D, 3D more. It's better for visual learning. Yeah. You see the layers of it. Yeah, I mean, you can make one of these. I could send you the, uh, the picture. And all you do is print it on 11 by 17, and then you just cut it out, put it on foam board. Cost me like 10 bucks to make it. Then you go to a construction store and get like one of these things. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to do that, I will coach you through that. Send me the thing for it. I would love to do that. I love how colorful it is. And I also need more structure. And that feels like a structure system that would work perfectly for me because it's unstructured, but it also is structured. Okay. I'll send it right now through Facebook. Okay. I'm going to let you go because I have a friend on their way over. To okay. 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 Good to see you. Good to chat. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.